News and Talk 1380 WALK. You are listening to the WALK Morning Show. My name is Angela Green, and I want to welcome our guest, Egberto Willis, this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Angela. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm honored. How are you doing this morning? I am doing just fine. I've been waiting for you all morning. We got so much to talk about. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So let me introduce you to our audience. Egberto Willis is a political activist, author, political blogger, and radio show host, a business owner, software developer, web designer, and mechanical engineer in Kingwood, Texas. He is an ardent progressive that believes tolerance is essential. His favorite phrase is political involvement should be a requirement for citizenship. He believes that we must get away from the current policies that reward those who simply move money or capital and produce nothing tangible for our society. If a change in policy does not occur, America will be no different than than many oligarchic societies where a few are able to accumulate wealth while the rest are left out because it is mathematically impossible to catch up. Very interesting. So, Egberto, let me just ask you, okay, let's just get let's just get right into it. What's up with this second assassination attempt? Was this real or was it Memorex? You want me to tell you what I honestly think? I I think there is something going on here where his own people want to get rid of him. I I mean, I I really don't think it, you know, I mean, they're going to try to spin it to the left. They're going to try to spin it to mental problems, all that kind of stuff. I think ultimately speaking, uh, I think these guys want, you know, when you have Don Colón, they want to, you can't, you can't go ahead and get rid of them yourself overtly, but something can happen to the other person because look, they know that they're with a loser. And I'm, when I say a loser, I'm not only talking about that he will lose the election in 2020, uh, in 2024, but I mean that somebody really that's doing nothing for them, neither for the left or the right or anyone else. So uh, it doesn't surprise me at all. And it would surprise me if it occurs again and again and again. And eventually, mm. uh, if he doesn't become president, eventually, so, well, if, if he doesn't become president, who cares, right? Exactly. I'm not sure how many people really care right now, but this is happening. So you think that it's his own people who are doing this? Wow. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Wow. I, I don't think it has wow, anything wow, wow. to do with the left or, or, or if you take a look at the, 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 the guy who knocked it off, you'll have the FBI saying, oh, well, he, we don't really know where he was. Well, look, the guy had an AR-15. Who, how many, how many lefties or otherwise that's, you know, that's not in gangs and that sort of stuff. Do you know with AR-15s, right? You know, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I see where you're going. You know, it's, and, and the other thing about it is they always bring the mental thing up, but you know, what's interesting with people with mental problems, they can be, Mm -hmm. they can be cued on to doing something, right? They can be convinced Mm -hmm. to do something without even knowing that they're being convinced to do something. So I, you know, on my program this morning, I didn't cover it at all. Right. And I got a caller Uh that said, uh, you you didn't call and say it. You didn't say anything about our man. You didn't say to have prayers for a man. Well, I'm like, well, you know, it, it really, as far as I'm concerned, it didn't interest me. So for the record, you are the host of Politics Done Right on 90.1 FM. So what do you? Yes. Yes, that is yes, correct. Ma'am. Right. Yes. OK, ma'am. good, good, good. I want to make sure I had that right and let make sure we let everybody know. So. You mentioned him winning or not. So what are your thoughts about that? Do you think he will win? Oh, no. Oh, no. I think and I I may I may look like a fool on November 6th, but I think Kamala is going to win in a landslide. Uh, I know everybody is talking about a close election and all of that sort of Mm -hmm. stuff. Right. But then suddenly you wake up this morning and he she's within five points in Texas. She's within uh, four points in Iowa. She's within five points in Florida. She's ahead in Vir- in North Carolina, ahead in Michigan, ahead in, I mean, by p- a few points, right? But 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I I feel I you know I'm out there among people, right? I'm not just sitting down behind a computer or something like that every day. I'm talking to people, and and you just get a vibe. There's this. I don't know if you uh, you're maybe you may be too young for this, but back in the uh, when <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Back we'll get you everywhere. <laughs> there we go. But let me tell you. Remember when Carter Reagan. Carter Reagan, it looked like it was a close election up to a month before. And then the flood. And by the way, I love I love me some Carter. Let me just tell you that I think he's Mm -hmm. one of the best honorable presidents we've ever had. But and he's from your state, Georgia. Yes, he is. He is. You know, he and, is. and he's uh, hanging on. He said he is uh, hanging on for dear life so that he can vote for the vice yes. president. That's all he's living for. Isn't that something? I love <laughs> the guy. I, I tell you, the you know, he's he's one honorable guy that I, I, I think doesn't get the right kind of credit after his presidency. But uh, when he lost, Reagan looked like it was still an iffy thing. And then it just the floodgates just opened up. With this maniac that's running against Kamala Harris, uh, people are. Did you see the debate? The way he his intonation and and his facial yeah. characteristics when he said the dogs yeah. and the. I mean, it uh, looked like a madman. Yeah, <laughs> he is a madman, and yes, I did. I saw all of it. I saw the goofy expressions and the goofy grin he had on his face. He was just. He just looked ridiculous, just as you said. He really did. So um, you're saying that there's no path to the White House for the Republicans. And I agree with you. And I yeah. I really do. I agree that she is going to win and that she is going to win big or bigly, as he would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I believe that she is going, if we want to use one of his words, bigly, that uh, she is going to win and she is going to win bigly. I think that is impossible that she will not win. Well, I won't say impossible because, I mean, J.D. Vance already yeah, told they us cheat, that they're right? liars and that they'll... Yeah, that they'll cheat and try to come up with something. They'll try it. They will definitely try it and have no shame about it. But I think that um, on the up and up, if everything is fair, then yes, I think that she will definitely win and that she has a clear path um, to the White House. Now, what happens, like you said, to him afterwards, who knows and who cares? But, you know, I I can let the one thing I will in, in, in this exuberance that I'm putting out there when I tell people stop worrying, just you know, she's going to win in a landslide. The other piece that I always say, the landslide only becomes effective if we do what we're supposed to do. And all of us, all of us need to before, before, make sure 30 days before the election that you are in fact registered to vote. Here in Texas, uh, they wiped out of uh, one point something million people off of the rolls. I check almost weekly to make sure that I'm still registered. But everybody, mm-hmm. whether you're in, in Georgia, North Carolina, Texas, wherever, Make sure you're registered to vote. They can't win because they don't have the policies to win, but they can Mm -hmm. depress the vote and win. If we are registered to vote and we go to vote, we will win in a landslide. There are 80 million people that didn't vote in the last election. And those 80 million people are mostly, you know what? People who support and think the way we do. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I have a caller on the line who I think would like to speak with you. Her name is Denise in Kennesaw. Denise? Oh, yes. Hi. Um, I am agreeing with your guest that his people are trying to uh, to take him out. Wow. Um, and not only, I think they're rehearsing what they're doing because when the first one happened, for that bullet to get so close to his ear and didn't penetrate, mm-hmm. Uh, mm. something was, that was a rehearsal before that happened. And he didn't seem to be too surprised because he wanted his shoes and make sure he is okay and put up the power sign, which belonged to us mm. black people. <laughs> and, um, and, and then they killed the, the, uh, my thing is going like, you know, the, the parents already knew what happened because that story just died away. You're not hearing the parents saying anything or anybody talking about that child that lost his life. Right. So I truly believe that it is his own people. They're just trying to get him, um, you know, points so that he can get, um, um, you know, get get sympathy and mm-hmm. and um, so that they they can, they can take away some of the yeah. shadows that is is on him. Wow, what do you say to that, Egberto? Thank you so yeah, much, that, Denise. We appreciate that. Thanks, Denise. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, this, the fact that you don't hear. First of all, let me just uh, to, to the audience, your audience. I don't believe in conspiracy theories, right? 
I do, but I, I, I do believe Denise is right where, uh, and I'm not, Denise, I wasn't saying that what you're saying is conspiracy. That's uh, your, your, your thoughts are just as good as mine as far as what I think happened. The truth of the matter is none of us know but that guy who's currently dead, right? But um, mm-hmm. I honestly think that it is, you know, let's give a, let, let me give a good example. Donald Trump goes ahead. He doesn't tell anybody to go shoot anybody. He didn't tell anybody to go ahead and break the doors of the Capitol. He didn't tell anybody to knock out cops or anything like that. He didn't have to do it. He just needed to lay the foundation that people knew that's what he expected them to do. And what I think mm-hmm. has been laid by some people behind Trump is lay the foundation that you know, if you get a if you get a shot at him, eh, it's cool. You know, uh, and I, I'm I'm not saying it quite as you know as serious as as it needs to be. But I honestly think, mm-hmm. like, th- there, people were asking questions like, how did they know? How did this guy know that Trump was going to be in town? That you know, the golf mm-hmm. course and that sort of a stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe on some website it turns out like I'm playing golf with Trump, who's in town today at X Y Z. Nobody. Nobody says go ahead and take a shot at him, but they are given in. So there are a lot of ways that people do things. Is understanding right, and that's what yeah. I think is going on wow. here. Wow. Well, we'll talk some more on the other side. We're going to break, and we'll be right back. News and Talk thirteen eighty. W-A-O-K. News and Talk 1380 WAOK. So we are back with our special guest, Egberto Willis, um, radio show host of Politics Done Right. So, Egberto, let me ask you. So Trump continues to be seen as a leader on the economy and immigration and inflation. Can you explain why this is? Um, he who filed bankruptcy numerous times, separated, starved and froze little immigrant kids in cages. Can you explain why he would be an authority on these areas? Uh, look, the the people don't really, un, until the media, if the, if the mainstream media were to say those things, often like they say all the other things about Kamala, often, oh, she doesn't have a, 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 a plan or she's not specific, people would start to get the message. But how many people know that he bankrupted six times? How many people know that Truth Social is a losing proposition? How many people know that he ripped off uh, students who went to the Trump University that wasn't a university? He's a con man. And what happens, however, and this is not going, a lot of people are not going to uh, do that, but our economic system is a con. And he is just the, the, the very most extensive instantiation of our economic system. What he does is just what our basic economy does on steroids. So there is no, there is no real will to go ahead and tell the American people that, hey, this guy is a con man. Because when you, I mean, when you elaborate what our economic system looks, let's give an example. People who get student loans, right? Wow, they're, they're no different than a corporation who get a student loan. And, but we, they can write off their debt as bankruptcy after bankruptcy after bankruptcy. We get stuck with it till we die. I mean, uh, so what he has done in his businesses is he's used the very, he's used all the tools of our economic system to the nth degree. So if they put him down too badly, they're doing the same with this stuff we called our economic system. So it, it's sort of like the system is there to protect guys like him. And that's the reason Americans now don't really know the true and real story about what he represents. So, I mean, on my program, uh, I try to, we do economics and we do politics and that sort of stuff. And what we try to do is open people's eyes to the reality. Uh, Donald Trump is just get the kudos because he has never been treated like other regular non-business like politicians. That's the truth. So we have Todd from Ohio who'd like to speak with you. Todd? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Angela. Good morning, Alberto. Good I'll, morning, my friend. Alberto, I, I think we should. this should be acknowledged since you mentioned it. The American economic system, our economy, is built of five compo- four components. Um, production, distribution, exchange, which often, often amounts to trade, and consumption. We're strong and clear on all four of those components as it applies to supply and demand. There's no con here. I, I, have, a, I have a question, though. The, um, the candidate, 
who I who I think is the best candidate, who's a part of the best team now, which is Kamala Harris. Is this something that you'd like to point out to the public that isn't commonly known that she's been working on in her administration? I know several things. Is there one thing that you know that maybe it would be good to tell people about it now because it doesn't come up, maybe hasn't come up often in the um, time when she's been able to display herself to the public? Something just something that people might not know. Like, for example, the administration has made it made more public dollars available through Title One for the eight million kids that are either in the preschool or kindergarten to um, have their funding improved, something like that, which is true. You, you, you know, it's I, it is, the middle class parents of those kids. Go ahead. Yeah, you're correct. OK, I mean, I understand. Let me take the first part of your, your statement first, as far as the four parts of the economic system. Uh, all of that may be correct, but a lot of it is th- the way it's implemented is rigged because all those things apply in every types of economies. All economies follow those four principles that you speak about. But above and beyond that is how they interrelate with the body politic and how they will integrate with allocation. Uh, capitalism is defined as the, uh, the, allocation, the, the efficient allocation of resources, which is actually a fallacy. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about it being a con. Because once you do that, you realize that while you are absolutely correct as far as the four pieces that make up an economy, how they interrelate with each other and how they apply to each citizen is dependent on the political system under which it operates. And what I say is that what we are operating and what we have always operated from the time of slavery, where free labor uh, built up capital, et cetera, it made it so that the entire system currently is a fraud. As far as uh, what we talk about, Kamala Harris, uh, Biden has done, Kamala, Biden, Kamala has done more for our economic system, for our economy as it is today, than any other president since Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And a lot of what they've, uh, they've the, just the CHIP Act and the IRA, meaning that bringing back manufacturing to the United States, uh, as an example, uh, all our chips and products are made in Taiwan, etc. When this, when we had a pandemic and the supply chain was arrested, it proved how these business people that we tend to look up to were pretty much uh, didn't know what they were doing with just-in-time inventory. It completely froze our system up unnecessarily. What uh, what uh, Kamala and the president has done with the CHIPS Act, what they've done with the infrastructure bill that Trump was supposed to do every week when he was president, uh, has revitalized activity in the, in the entire economy. And that is just both of them working on that together. Now, she has spoken about doing a whole lot of other things above and beyond uh, beyond the president. And some of the things that she spoke about is a little bit less than the president, which I kind of disagree with. But on the ones that I agree with, uh, as far as um, the, the child credit, uh, the $6,000 newborn child credit, the, the uh, support for, uh, uh, what is it, giving parents assistance, uh, going to work. I mean, there's a there's a plethora of things on our agenda that um, actually I should probably write a write a paper with with the itemized list of of the items. But compared to what Donald Trump has had to provide, there is nothing, absolutely nothing there. The fifty thousand dollar business credit that she's talking about, it's a real thing. It's a real thing that allow the regular person out there that doesn't have the the capital that big businesses have can actually use to turn their income tax into a business. It's amazing the things that would happen under her. So when you hear people talk about she doesn't have specifics or the, as, as Angela was just talking about, that somehow Donald Trump is better at the economy, they absolutely don't know what they're talking about. I hope that kind of lays a little groundwork, my friend. Todd, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, OK, OK, OK. I, I wanted to. Um, you still there, Alberto? Yes, yeah, I'm here, sir. There. So if time permits. I like, and by the way, that chip, one of those chip plants is going to be in Ohio, Franklin County, and the adjoining county. And the medium Great. job um, payment, the median of Ohio, and the medium job payment is going to be somewhere around sixty thousand dollars. And that's that's mm-hmm. stable middle class in the state of Ohio. But I wanted to know, did you know? Can you do you know what the evidence is of the tie-in to the thirty-six hundred dollar tax credit that came from the um, Rescue America Act, which expired in twenty twenty-three? And Biden and Harris put that push that forward quickly when they got in the office. And the six thousand tax 
$6,000 tax credit, $6,000 tax credit for children that she's aspiring to put forward, but is not in place. Do you know what the tie-in is between those two things? Before you answer uh, that, you Egberto, we're going to go to break. Can we go to break okay. first and then yes, answer on the other side? Okay, sure. we'll go to break. Um, hold on a second, Ty. We'll get you on the other side. We'll be right back. News and Talk. 1380 WALK. News and Talk 1380, you are listening to the WALK Morning Show. And we are back with our guest, Egberto Willis. And Todd, you're still holding? I am still holding. All right, Egberto, um, did you remember okay. the question that he asked? Absolutely. Right the- Absolutely. Okay. Let, let me first qualify a few things. Uh, uh, I think Todd probably knows this already. Kamala's plan is going to provide $3,600, up to $3,600 uh, per child. I think it's a child under six or something like that. 3000 a child over six, something to that effect. And But for $6, newborns, dollars. it's $6,000 for newborns. 6000 for newborns. Right. Uh, so it's 6000 for newborns and $3,600 for uh, kids, you know, uh, afterwards. Now, that sort of mimic what they did under the American Rescue Plan, if you're asking about interrelation between, you know, I guess the credit that was there before, that got aborted when the Republicans came into power. They didn't extend that. And in not extending that, you know what happened. Uh, we showed that fiscal policy can actually solve poverty because what we did during the pandemic when we provided that thirty six up to thirty six hundred dollars per child, what we did is reduce poverty in half after the year after that was expired the year after that expired uh, po- child poverty came right back. so what Kamala is talking about doing will do exactly again what she and Biden did in the, the American rescue plan, which in effect pulled a whole lot of kids out of poverty. I think it was that where you wanted me to drive with that, Todd, or did you want something else out of that? That's that's some that's a small portion of it. And that, and I did want you to my overall reason for posing the question was to make sure that there's things out there that haven't been clearly defined to people through Kamala Harris and her team. They can be defined by people who get airtime like this. And that's what I wanted you to do. Let's point out that, listen, there's there's a connection to the work that's been done prior to her pushing for this position and mm-hmm. now her pushing for this position. And that's important because, as you did say, it did cut some, not all, but some um, poverty, um, people that would have been impoverished in half. But it also did something for the middle cl- the social economic middle class, which varies from wherever county you may live in in the country. It gave mm-hmm. some of them a boost that they would not otherwise have. That six thousand dollars, that's thirty six hundred dollars, can be eaten up very quickly just in daycare alone in a year. Mm-hmm. Me and Angela know that, and mm-hmm. it's it's a good thing to have. But there needs to be explanation as to how they came to that conclusion, and that's what I wanted more people to understand. She spent her time studying the position that she's trying to get while she's been in the position that she is in. And because she's been studying it, there's evidence that leads to proof as to why her idea will probably work. But you have to hear it or you have to and, read it. And it's important to use the airtime to talk about it. OK. And, you know, you know you, let me Todd. just tell you thank something, you so Todd. Stuff. OK, I'm sorry. I just want to go tell right Todd. Go thank right you. I wanted to tell Todd oh, thank okay. you because I, I think he's I think. It is incumbent on those of us who have a platform to do exactly what you're saying there. And when we don't do that, it's it's incumbent upon people like you to come out here and say, hey, guys, hold up the thing. People need to be informed. It's the same thing uh, uh, Angela said in the beginning when Angela asked, why is it that people still believe Trump uh, is the uh, powerful guy on the economy. And I think your answer right there, Todd, was exactly things that we, myself and myself and and others need to do. And that is to put out that information to counteract what's already out there. So for that, I'll tell you, brother, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to say thank you to you. I haven't heard anyone say my name like that since my 10th grade Spanish class. My Spanish (laughs) just calls my name like that. What do they call you? Thank you so much. Yeah, you call me Angela. Oh, okay. (laughs) I love it. I love it. I love it. That's the last time I heard my dad when I was in Spanish. I know. I know. I know. Thank you so much. So I know you saw the debate. We talked about that earlier. And Trump said Mm -hmm. that um, 
he had nothing to do with Project 2025. He don't know nothing about it. He don't know he didn't write it. He don't know nothing about it. You believe that? Let me let's let's get this very clear to everybody listening. <laughs> okay. He went and gave a speech at the Heritage Foundation thanking them for coming up with the policies in the Project 2025, which an offshoot of that is the Trump 47 or something like that. Uh, so he is intimately connected with it. All the people that worked in Trump's organizations have written chapters in Project 2025. But let's go to the kicker. The kicker is the following. The book about the Project 2025, the foreword of that book was written by no other than J.D. Vance. And guess who J.D. Vance is? The VP candidate running with Trump. And you know what? Why would they have stopped printing the book when they found out that Project 2025 was going to be a bust to Americans? So no, folks, you only gullible people are going to believe that Trump had nothing to do with it. And let me tell you, uh, there is ignorance. I'm ignorant of a lot of things, but I'm not willfully ignorant of nothing. So or I'm not willfully mm-hmm. ignorant of anything. So what I'm trying to tell folks, mm-hmm. you know, it's OK to be ignorant. Just don't be willfully ignorant. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, when you see a spade, you got to call a spade a spade. He knows everything about Project 2025. And I can't believe that he stood there and said that. So we got another caller, Flavor King, who'd like to speak to you. Good morning, Flavor King. How are you? God bless you, Sister Angela Green. We love you and uh, we respect you and we're glad you're back. Thank you. Thank you, Flavor King. But you finna get this work. Oh, okay. (laughs) Put it in there. Bring it. Okay. All right. All right. Brother Alberto. Yes, sir. No, to my people, this is the first thing I got to say to everybody. Learn Spanish. All right. Now, you were talking about the economics. The Hispanic economic is, might be doing good, but I was or not the, the black race. Now, uh, you're talking about $6,000 credit for babies, newborn babies. On one hand, on the other hand, you're talking about killing babies in the womb. The black race, we done kill 30 million of our babies. Y'all having babies, and y'all done outpopulated us now, and we still killing our babies like it's some kind of contraceptive or whatever, but we just killing our babies. That's child sacrifice. Now, let's get to... um. The Republicans that's against Trump, y'all. The Republicans that's going against Trump is Bush and them. The same ones behind the New World Order. That means taking up guns, one world, one currency, one religion, and all this nonsense. And that's why every time a shooting occurs, it's always the same kind of gun, black people. When they go into schools, it's always the same kind of gun. Ain't no 9 millimeter, ain't no Tech 9, ain't no AK. I don't know. It's always the same kind of gun. And it's the same MO. It's a, it's a, 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 a mentally disturbed person that the government already been dealing with. That means they sending them in there. All right. Now, if anybody's really at Trump, it is the Democrats because they can't let that man get in. He's gonna wipe the flow with all these folks that's, that's kidnapping children and want to go in the ladies' bathroom and and and. and Letting them come in our the children in classes and, and dancing around with half in front of our children, trying to sexualize them. That ain't gonna happen. Alberto, do you believe men should be in the female bathroom? Okay, can I can I address uh, your items uh, shortly, like one at a time? Is that okay? Yeah. Huh? Oh well, I ain't. Okay. I got one more, y'all. Since you're gonna okay, do it like give me that. the one more, and then I'll, uh, I'll do it one at a time. Do you believe we gotta take vaccines? Okay. All okay. Right. Do you believe we gotta take vaccines? The Trump didn't Let, gotta take no vaccines, and I want to tell y'all about these cats and dogs that y'all ain't okay. even heard about. Can I do that? Okay. And then, yeah, you got plenty of time to, to straighten that up. All right. This is what's going on in Springfield, beautiful people. When I first heard Trump say that about the dogs during the debate, I'm like, oh, there you go. He done messed up. Whether it's true or not, because I had already heard some before he said it. Okay. Now, when he said it. I knew y'all was going to run with it to be Democrat because y'all supposed to. That's how we, we do it. All right. And then it came out that it's supposed to be Haitians doing it. And so that made me feel bad because I really thought it was y'all doing it or somebody else. Anybody but black people eating dogs and cats. All right. Then my folks called me from Springfield. And this is what's going on, y'all. I hate to say it, but this is what's really going on. The Haitians 
eating cats and dogs. And I thought they was doing it because they was hungry, because y'all getting all the stipends and, 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 and the food stamps, and the Haitians ain't getting nothing. That's what I thought. But no, they eating cats and dogs, y'all, because they powering up. All right. They, All right. We got to go to break, Flavor King. Thank you so much for calling. We appreciate you and appreciate your voice. We'll let um, Egberto respond to you after this break. We'll be right back. News and Talk 1380 WALK. News and Talk 1380, we are back. So, Egberto, I feel like I owe you an apology for that. Oh, no, not at all. I really do. I know that. But... No, no, no. I, I hear that all the time, too. So, you know, but can I say something about that? Because I think it's Please. important because I think he what what we just heard there is very important. And in this regards, there is a concerted effort to misrepresent and to dummify a lot of our people. And by the way, he said he spoke as if, he, oh, I'm a uh, the black folk ain't doing good. The Hispanic folks are doing just fine. Hey, I am a black dude. OK. Uh, I, 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 I look no different than any other black person. I just happen to be from Panama and speak Spanish. So let's get, I ha, when I came to the States, I had to remind all my black American brothers and sisters that we all came from the same diaspora. The ship just stopped somewhere else in different places, but yeah. we're all, we're all from West Africa and all that good stuff. Secondly, when it comes to what he had to say about women, it's important because there's a message that the, the right wing is putting into our community, into the black communities uh, uh, to really tell, to, to really convince them that somehow uh, Donald Trump is their martyr. You can't believe this stuff. The reality is, first of all, I will. I am a man. I have no right to tell any woman what to do with her body. It's between her and her God. I have no that. As Tim Walls would say, please say that again. Say it right, again, I, please. No, I have no right. I'm sorry. You try to go tell a man what to do with his testicles and see how much how how he starts to act. So why dare I yeah, tell a exactly. woman about uh, about what to do with her body? I will not dare do that. He also mentioned about uh, 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 what's going on in in Springfield, Ohio. Look, could there be a possibility that somebody ate a cat or a dog or did something? Yeah, you can go to Appalachia and see something like that happens. There are wacko people living all over. The danger of what they did is they try to put that on the Haitians, even though the example mm -hmm. that they had with somebody mutilating a cat was not a Haitian. But again, uh, that is a danger of uh, the misinformation that's infiltrating our community from the right to try to split the way the community votes. We have to be very careful about that. Every time you see anybody that of any pigmentation that supports a Donald Trump, they really are misled. And I'm not saying that because I am a Democrat or anything like that. I'm a progressive. I vote wherever we get progressive values for people. But it's important for us not to allow them to infiltrate our media with the information that would have us vote against our own interests. When he talks about wiping with the floor, Trump would wipe my brother who called. Use him as a mop because, again, uh, and when it talks about trans and whatever, mind your own business. I don't care if somebody wants to be trans or otherwise. You, you live your life. Stay out of my life. You live your life. I'll live my life. If we, if we took that stance, we could all live in harmony, right? We could all live in harmony. Stop worrying about what somebody else is doing as long as it doesn't affect you. If you want to understand, and I'm going to say something that's very dangerous here, but it's true. Uh, people always talk about the immorality of the trans or the cross dressers or or the homosexual or whatever. If you want to know who abuses your children, who uh, sexually abuses and otherwise your children more than any other institution or person, I hate to tell you, people go to church. All right. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, hey, you telling the truth. That is definitely true. I mean, we we know that we know that that is true. And so. I thank you for saying it. I really thank you for saying it. I thank you for joining us this morning, too. You have been a wonderful guest this morning. I'm sure that is in large part to the fact that you are a radio host yourself for Politics Done Right. So thank you so much for joining us. I have valued your voice and your opinion this morning, and I would love to have you back. So can I please call you back to have you back as a you guest can again? You, you can have me back anytime. Um, I, I love your show. And by the way, you have a beautiful radio voice. Let me just say that uh, one that's very appealing. Oh. People want to say people want to say like, ah, people just call to listen in. You know, what can I say? Oh, shucks. I tell you, thank you, Egberto. I really appreciate that. 
I will definitely be reaching out to you again to have you back on again at some time in the in the near future. You know, maybe around the time of the election, we can talk again. Absolutely. So I'll definitely Absolutely. reach out to have you again. Thank you so much. You were a great guest again today. Thank you so much. You have All a right, wonderful so- day. Thanks for having me. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.